My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can, and these are the bullets. The Earth is in an ice age, and has been for about 2.4 million years. Milankovitch cycles have driven climate change during that entire 2.4 million years. Based on where we are in the Milankovitch cycles, we should be headed into a new glacial period, but it hasn't started yet because of global warming due to greenhouse gas emissions. Since the widespread use of fracking began in roughly 2006, many millions of tons of methane have been released into the atmosphere on top of many millions of tons of carbon released from coal burned to make solar panels. The Honga Tonga Honga Apai volcanic eruption on January 15, 2022 spewed many cubic kilometers of earth and a large volume of water as high as the mesosphere above the stratosphere that has now encircled the globe. Greenhouse gas in the stratosphere causes global cooling. Most glacial periods of the last 500,000 years were preceded by a period of advanced global warming, punctuated by a sharp turnaround and rapid global cooling. The effect of the Honga Tonga debris and water vapor in the stratosphere is technically a wild card, but may affect plant life as it causes planetary cooling. In other words, you might want to get your stash together now. My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. I'm going to let me just give it to you short and sweet here. So, um, this is AccuWeather, and um, everybody's probably already heard this story already. It's a little late for a Monday morning quarterback because this like happened a, a week ago, but I got to weigh in on this because this is a subject of my channel. This man's name is Withy, Jay Withy, young cat, nice cat. So there he is. He broke into a school and um, basically uh, a friend of his needed help. And I guess he's a tow truck driver. So he drove into the to the na to a neighborhood in Buffalo when it was in the middle of this historic once in a generation snowstorm. So the Buffalo area, they get lake effect snow and all, all kinds of stuff all the time. And this storm, like, I think they had 60, 70 mile an hour winds. I mean, it was like just ridiculous. On that part of Lake Erie, I guess it is, it gets wicked. And so this is a thing. I mean, like this is known from, I mean, that's, that's New England, right? So here's the thing. This guy rescued 20 m****ers who were out in a m****ing snowstorm in a in the in a worse blizzard since 1978 why were 20 people out on the street and I want and I want all the people that were saved and it's a it's a nice group of people listen man it's you know it's a group of folks the here here's here's some of them here you know these are just like average folks out right so please forgive me for the use of this <laughs> Don't take it personally. I don't have any, you know what I mean? This is a nice group of people here, really. Dog owners, they might've been out walking their dogs, uh, but a lot of them were in their cars and running their their heat. Uh, Mr. Withy that was down to a quarter of a tank. And so he had to find some place to get warm. He was knocking on people's doors and they weren't letting him in. You might've seen this story. Uh, the link is in the description. If you if you're not aware of it, if you are aware of it, it's just going to take me a second because uh, because this is important. So here, this is a thing, you know. It's it's something that I used to see in like science fiction movies, and I always I was like, man, people are not that dumb. They wouldn't do that, you know. Like so they're trying to escape the volcano, and and the little girl says to daddy, you know. Oh, I left Fluffy behind in the hotel room, you know, and he's like, oh, my God, you know, and he has to go back and get the dog and that, you know, puts the lava right on there, you know, and I'm like, man, people never do that. They're too, no, bullshit. Having been through the pandemic, I'm telling you, people become irrational. People become totally fucking irrational in, in an emergency. They do. So this is a group of people that, and I don't know what their, I don't know what their uh, reasons for being out. I'm sure they have legitimate reasons for being out in the worst snowstorm since 1978 in Buffalo, New York. You know, I mean, maybe that's like, you know, you live in Buffalo. Maybe you're like, man, you know, I've been through some snowstorms before. But look, man, you know, when having a blizzard is not necessarily a good time to hatch out for a pack of smokes and a beer. You know what I'm saying? A six pack. 
And this is what, listen, people who are drinkers, uh, smokers or, or whatever, and I'm not, I don't want to put any shade on any of these people. These, these nice, wonderful human beings here, dog owners, man. You know what I'm saying? You can just tell. You can just look across, scan across these faces. These are nice people. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to throw any shade on anybody in particular. That this is not the entire group of 20, whatever. doesn't matter. I don't want to throw shade on anybody, but, but I will say this, that I know me. You know what I mean? If I was smoking and drinking, um, you know, and I ran out of cigarettes in the middle of a, you know, in the middle of a snowstorm, and, and I couldn't drive, I might walk out to the store. And so 50 people, 50 people died in that snowstorm. Um, and I guess it was the mayor. I, I'm not sure. I don't remember if it was the mayor, the governor, or um, uh, uh, which particular person it was. I'd have to look it up. And I'm trying to get this video out because I have a tendency to run on. You know what I mean? And I, I want to get to the point here for you. The man, the man got on TV and he said, I'm not asking you. I'm not pleading with you. I'm telling you, do not go out in this snowstorm. Now, why am I a, a, why am I a video blogger doing this? Because this is a subject of my channel. Rapid onset glacial period. We're already in an ice age. The earth has been in an ice age for the past million plus years you know um and you'd have to ask a geologist or somebody to really you know to put the specifics on that it doesn't matter you know what i mean there's certain things that don't matter that's where we are we the earth is in an ice age right now and we oscillate back and forth between glacial and interglacial periods we're at a point now where the milankovitch cycles where the Mil where we are in the milankovitch cycles where we are in terms of um the sun spot, uh, sunspots and things like that, the earth should be getting colder and to hear them tell it, it's not. You look at sea surface temperatures, you know, and there's there's different things going on. I'll, I'm going to show you that in a second. Well, this video is getting longer than I really wanted it to be. I wanted to do five minutes and you see how that's going, right? Nice people, nice folks here. Don't want to throw any shade on anybody. But why the fuck are you out in a fucking snowstorm? I mean, so they might have legitimate reasons for, for doing what they do. By the way, the woman over here in the pink looks looks amazingly like my sister <laughs> like a heavier set version of my sister you know might have been out to walk the dog i don't know you know what i'm saying um but this is why it's a good idea to have a storehouse of if you're a drinker if you're a smoker if you like have a cabot or whatever you know what i'm saying whatever your fucking thing is you know what i mean if you're like really into cheetos or cookies or whatever keep a keep a snow stash of that stuff like a, like a several day supply have yourself a nice couple cartons of cigarettes in there some dip if you like dip tobacco or whatever you look i live on the real world man people use tobacco they use alcohol you know if you need to have if you got to have some alcohol then you need to have a you need to have a stash of a beer you know, uh, some alcohol. I don't drink and I don't do drugs. I mean, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't do any of that stuff. But if I did, you would want to have that placed in such a way that it's going to stay good for the season. A seasonal stash that you don't touch, that you only touch in case of emergencies so you don't have to go out in a snowstorm. Because what's going to happen is, even if, you know, is is somebody's going to have to come out and rescue you? You know what I mean. And um, your life means something to somebody. You have people that care about you. You might feel like a worthless sack of shit. I don't know. You know, but some people out there, you might you might have some habits and or whatever. Um, you know, you might feel like a worthless sack of shit. But I guarantee you, somebody out there cares about you, and they would really prefer for you not to freeze the fuck to death in a snowstorm. And this is what's um, this is the subject of my channel. This is what's on tap, folks. If you live above the 30th parallel and maybe some parts of Australia, um, you know, I don't know about South Africa, um, what the potential is there. Probably not that much. Maybe uh, lower Chile and uh, on, on uh, South America or whatever. But 
the upper, you know, everybody lives in the, most people live in the northern hemisphere. So if you live abo above the 30th parallel or in a higher elevation or something like that, heavy snow is on tap. That's what's on tap. You got a high level of heat in the, in the, um, in the, the, the sea surface temperatures and a, a, a much lower heat capacity on the landmass, which means that the land masses cool off much more rapidly than so if there if there is shade on the landscape, that land temperature is going to plummet. And when it does, and you have extra moisture in the air because of higher sea surface temperatures, that that necessarily means that you're going to have large amounts of frozen precipitation. You know, maybe tens of feet at a time. We've already seen this. We've already seen tens of feet drop in um, in the Alps. In Germany, in some places, just uh, California, forget about it. Uh, I think last year, maybe somewhere in Oregon, Washington, they had 10 feet of snow fall on a WAP up in the uh, up in the mountains. I'm sorry, but if 10 feet of snow, if you're in your car going to get a pack of cigarettes and 10 feet of snow falls on you, you're probably going to die. They're probably going to find your dead body in your car. And they did that, and this happened. That's why I'm talking. That's why I'm saying this shit. So, you know, if you got to, got to go out, you know, make sure you got something warm on your feet and your hands. You're going out in a skidoo suit. You know what I'm saying? Get yourself a skidoo suit. Have yourself a couple blankets in your car. Take a five-gallon bucket, one that's got a lid. You can get a bucket with a lid. You can get a bucket with a lid at Home Depot, Lowe's, or you know somewhere like that. Ace, Ace Hardware's probably got them. A bucket with the lid. You got some supplies in there. You got some toilet paper. You got some water. You know, uh, you got maybe something to snack on. You got some, some other something to drink. If you got your dog with you, you know, I mean, do what you got to do. This is why I say having a cop whistle is a good thing to have. Because if you get buried in the snow and you can hear that people are up there trying to find you, or you know what I mean, if you're lost and it's your visibility is low. That's that's that thing that Kate Winslet had in in uh, the Titanic, you know what I'm saying? That's how they they found her in that situation. I'm just saying, that's a noisemaker that you can have around your neck, that you can make noise with, if people are looking for you. So, um, or not looking for you, you know, stuff like that. But the bucket is to shit in if you have to. If you're stuck in your car. You know what I mean? This is reality, folks. You can shit in it. You can put the fucking lid back on it. Real shit. I mean, if you're going to go out in a snowstorm, if you live above the 30th parallel and you're going to go out during the wintertime at this particular time in our in Earth's history with anthropogenic cl climate change effects and all that kind of stuff, you need to prepare like, you know, like you need to have all your survival shit on you. I'm telling you. And, and for God's sake, if it's in the wintertime, you know, I, you know, I know a lot of people are not doing that well right now. You know, you've got some, some inflation and stuff like that. But to me, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't go out with less than a, a half a tank. A half a tank. You know, it's like people say, don't go have le less than a quarter of a tank. This is what Mr. Withy here had. He had a quarter of a tank in his truck. And he was like weaning it all the way down to the end and had to break into the school to let 20 people in. 20 people out wandering the streets in a snowstorm. Okay, now why, 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 why am I telling you this now? Because it's a subject of my channel, because uh, because of all of the natural gas from natural gas and, and oil exploration over the years, that stuff has been released into the stratosphere. And so there's a large plume of carbon dioxide and, and uh, methane in the stratosphere. You can look at my channel and see all this stuff. Got any charts? They're called reactive gases. Uh, you know, they changed some stuff around over at Copernicus. Uh, so some of this stuff's a little bit hard to find. I'm going to show you what this this right here. The 50 hectopascal level, it's a pressure level. It's about 67,000 feet. Okay. Three years ago, four years ago, this right here was a, was a ribbon of red. It was just a ribbon. It was about maybe two of these uh, rectangles wide that went right down through the middle. And now it's pole to pole. This is about a thousand parts per million at the 50 hectopascal level. Greenhouse gas in the stratosphere causes global cooling. 
That's it. Argue with them, you know. You can argue with it if you want to. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, they did this so that ain't cool. So now that's thank you very much, Google. That's much appreciated. So now if I zoom in on this page, then it will remember that I zoomed in on it before instead of zooming in on all my my tabs. Thank you, Google. Awesome. So there's your temperature anomaly. You got some red in there, but look at the look at the equator. And here's the other bit with this. Hey YouTube, I'm gonna take a few minutes here to go over the Tonga volcanic eruption that took place earlier this year. I'm gonna see how it interfered with the atmosphere, how it could interfere with climate, crop growing, and you. Stay tuned. Scientists have discovered the true ferocity of a huge volcanic eruption off the coast of Tonga. Okay, so not a whole lot of views on this, but it's a pretty good analysis. So like this graphic, this is probably from, this is a 10 hectopascal. Okay, 10 hectopascals, a hectopascal is basically a millibar. And that's a unit of pressure. So 10 hectopascals is a very small amount of pressure. And that's probably 80,000, 80, 100,000 feet, something like that. It's way up in the stratosphere. It's, it's high in the stratosphere, I'm pretty sure. And so they're showing the Honga Tonga right over here on, the, on these, this group of islands. So it's by Fiji. The Honga Tonga volcano is over here by Fiji. Volcano blew up last year blew a whole bunch of 58 they said 58,000 uh, olympic sized swimming pools full of water basically into the stratosphere so you can see that that temperature is, is dropping the news is that a year later that their measurements of water vapor the water vapor has basically wrapped all the way around the globe and that they think that it's going to be perhaps a 10 year event Here we go. So, um, and I'd have to sit down and really analyze the, uh, okay, there's a pressure level. Water vapor anomaly. So that's a water vapor anomaly. Altitude in kilometers, 25.8 kilometers. Um, so basically, essentially, the water vapor from this from this volcanic eruption has ramped all the way around the globe, and it's up pretty it's up pretty high. So when you have, and they say that that it has been said before that it blew that water vapor all the way up into the mesosphere, which is above the stratosphere. So that can cause albedo and um, an albedo effect, which is where the sunlight is reflected off of the atmosphere, the, the upper atmosphere. And um, the, the reason that greenhouse gas in the stratosphere causes global cooling is because it's like a blank. And the way that greenhouse gas works is it, it trades the, uh, the infrared photons back and forth between, between the molecules. So you have two greenhouse gas molecules and and it emits the photon and then another molecule catches it and, and, they, and they toss it around. Well, if the, the, the layer is closer to space, what happens is, is, as a matter of statistics, because that blanket is closer to space, half of those photons are going to go out into space and then a smaller number is going to go back towards the Earth, right? When, you're, when the blanket is near the Earth, then if it's above, in other words, if it's above the cloud tops, then you drive up the temperature of the Earth's cooling system, which is evaporation at the surface and condensation at the cloud tops, right? And then that heat condensation is, a, is exothermic and that heat radiates out into space. Well, if you have a blanket there, it's like throwing a blanket over the condenser of your air conditioner and drives up the heat holes of the whole system. However, if it's further up than that, then you have this thing where You've, you're trapping those tr those trapped photons end up radiating most of them radiate out into space because it, when the earth is a is a sphere right so when you're radiating out 
when you're rating it out in a blink at an oblique angle, right? A tangential angle to the earth, then it's going to space. And every so everything beyond it's more than a hundred and eighty degree angle. It's, you know, two hundred something degrees that you're actually radiating into space. So it's a smaller so you're looking at something like this, right? And and it's just a matter of statistics. It's random. The molecules emit photons at the same frequency that they're absorbed. So if we're talking about heat trapping, then you're talking about infrared, roughly, photons, and those photons will get randomly absorbed, but randomly kicked back off, right? So if your blanket looks like this, then you have a smaller amount that's actually going towards the earth than at oblique angles and at any other angle that leads to space. So it's a smaller amount, it's a smaller angle of probability of those particles shooting back towards the Earth. So uh, apparently um, certain kinds of serious clouds will trap a certain amount of heat. Uh, this is the subject of Richard Lindzen. That was one of his, that's a, that was a thesis of his. Now this is a guy, Richard Lindzen has been around for a long time. And he's a professor at MIT. I'm not sure how he's doing, if he's still alive, if he still works there or what, but he's notable for having written um, part of uh, one of the recent IPCC reports about climate change and stuff like that. Has been noted to be a skeptic, a climate change skeptic. So this, this, is, a, this is a wild card. This is why I'm telling you all this stuff. This is why I'm whipping out all this foul language because this is a wild card. Okay, if this is cold, if so he's talking about, well, which one wins out? Well, it's a, you know, technically it's a greenhouse gas, and we don't know if it's going to cause global warming or if it's going to cause global cooling. Well, if it's ice crystals and it causes an albedo effect, it's said that all rapid changes in the atmosphere, that all rapid climate changes, temperature changes, happen because of changes in the atmosphere. <coughs> And the, the, the geologic record shows that each glacial period has been preceded by a period of advanced global warming, where the, the, the graph is like straight up and down, and then it just turns around. And I believe that's from something called, my, my term is the methane off switch hypothesis. <coughs> so there's that. And, uh, God, I wish I knew the guy's name. I don't see it on, I wish I, I'm just saying. Yeah, man, you can put your name on here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, it's it's probably in here somewhere. He probably said his name. He does some work for another, uh, for another YouTuber. He does, I guess, he's a researcher. But anyway, he did a nice job on this piece, and um, I wish I could find his name somewhere. So anyway, he's you know, I mean, Squatch Watch. You know, that's that's basically the subject of his channel is you know, alternative, alternative ideas. And, and he's saying that the, the scuttlebutt is, the long and the short of it is, it could potentially cause a massive cold spell. And he's saying that this is going to be around for 10 years. So that's that. I put the entire climate change narrative. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Dan Britt. To get that out there, because they're, you know, you got to sort of give a nod. You have to give a nod to the people who have been doing the work over the past decades, you know what I mean? And 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 acknowledge the reason that they say that and, and work within that and explain how it is that you could have a possibility other than the one that he's talking about where Dan Brett basically, in a nutshell, it's climate change boils down to everything that have all the snowstorms and fires and floods and heat spells and all that stuff is in the noise. The signal of climate change is sea level rise. That's the signal. So everything else fluctuates, but sea level rise because uh, reglaciation happens, according to Dan Brett, from cold summers. Cold summers don't allow the, the snow to melt, and then you get a, a buildup of glaciation. However, it, do, it is in the, the what is in the, the, the geologic record is uh, massive snowfalls, massive changes in climate that happen suddenly. So, and I went, I just kind of discussed this a little bit, but you got to, you know, you kind of got to give a nod to the state of the art, which is what that is, what he's, what he's describing there. 
So anything can happen, but this is an outlier. This is a this is one of those things you're talking about a uh, an impediment or a, well, you're talking about something that and, uh, 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 something that's going on in the upper atmosphere, you know, greenhouse gas slash ice crystals in the upper atmosphere that's gonna that's gonna be there for ten years. So that along with the sun going into hibernation and where we are in the Milankovitch cycles, all basically saying we should be going into a glacial period and knowing that glacial periods can come on suddenly and this happens. So uh, basically the, the long and the short of it is not really a good time to be going out in the middle of a snowstorm. I mean, look at that. Going out in the middle of a snowstorm for a pack of cigarettes. That's the upshot of all that. There's carbon dioxide. It's a thousand parts per million, which people have argued, you know, well, man, it's at the 50 hectopascal level if you did the math, and that would be, you know, a very small amount. Well, it is, but the thing about it is, is now you're talking about it's all the way up to a thousandth of what is there. So it's, it's a concentration. It's an amount, and there's a reason why it's red. Okay? Okay? 50 hectopascals, 67,000 feet, roughly. And it's pole to pole. It wasn't pole to pole three or four years ago. Methane. Here, look at this. It's in my hypothesis was... Shit, look at this. A shit ton of methane in the end up there. This is the total column. Okay, here we are, 50 hectopascals. And you see right down the middle. See that green there in the middle? that's reacting with ozone. So this has already been, this has been in play. I've made many, many videos about this, about this, that all of these emitters of, of methane that are out there, China, India, but really a lot of stuff was coming off of fracking fields from Russia and Canada and America and all over the place. Um, the Middle East, obviously. Um, here, 850 hectopascals. This is about uh, 1,200 feet, I think, up. Yeah, man. Wow. See this? See that dark spot? This dark spot right over here in Canada and all these dark spots over here in Russia, Siberia, you know, all the way around, just, just everywhere. That methane goes right for the stratosphere. It reacts with oxygen, produces, you know, there's all kinds of stuff in the upper atmosphere. Uh, but you end up with water vapor, and you end up knocking the shit out of the, the ozone layer, and um, you end up with water vapor and, and carbon dioxide in the upper atmosphere, in the, in the upper parts of the stratosphere, maybe all the way up into the mesosphere. So that was ongoing before Honga Tonga ever blew up. Here's ozone. See that that blue there? It's it's a little less. It's not horrendous. It's not black. Black means that there's not it's non-existent. So that's oh this is total column. Okay. Total column, you know, um, and you end up with a lot because of the methane. You end up with a lot of ozone near closer to the surface. Ozone is also a greenhouse gas. It's a pretty strong one too. So there are things that like there are things that are that are mitigating because they're going to they're going to continue they are going to continue to have emissions of greenhouse gases throughout whatever the hell breaks loose from Honga Tonga. So this is 50 hectopascal same place and it's not it's not totally devoid but it's pretty low. Uh, these are in DU units which is a Dobson unit and um, I'm not up on my Dobson units but it's it is what it is. But you can see that there's a depletion there right along the equator. How much of that has to do? Because this is what one of the things that um, Mr. Squatch here was talking about. And I don't hate to call him that, but, uh, you know, I didn't, he, I didn't hear him mention his name. Um, he's talking about that... The water vapor, from, water vapor from Honga Tonga, and this is true, will will impact ozone, and that 
the scattering effects of that water vapor and the depletion of that ozone might cause the plants to do funny things like, you know, I don't know, die. Um, and cold weather, you know, might cause some plants to die. We have an encroachment of, of less hardy plants further north. So all, the, all those plants are going to die, and then you can have a, a, a greater risk of, of forest fires and things like that. And so it's just good to have, you know, it's a good time to have your wits about you. There's stuff going on, and that's, that's what it is. And, one, you know, one of the reasons that I started doing this is because it, the, there was this thing, and um, Dan Britt, I think he says it, um, there's actually two, several videos of the same talk that he did. And I'm not sure if I captured it uh, or if it's in this particular video here that, that I have linked down here in the description. Um, he talks about that he did a paper. Dan Britt, in his early years as a geologist, did a paper about um, Venus Earth, climate doom, that, well, you know, Venus is... is the way it is because of greenhouse gas and global warming and that's not entirely true you know venus and earth are completely different you know and so he took this he wrote a paper about it and gave it to his instructors gave it to the the people who care about that when you're going to college and and they la apparently laughed at it i think he said um so but Venus Earth was floated not that long ago. They were talking about human extinction and all this stuff and for the uh, Extinction Rebellion, you know, uh, which is still around. Uh, and there's, you know, a lot of legitimate aspects to that. But basically the Venus Earth thing is bullshit. The Earth can't turn into Venus. It's, it's impossible. It's just, it's not possible. There are too many, there are too many feedback loops that go in the opposite direction like shading from clouds and things like that and, and particles that get released into the into the stratosphere. So, you know, um, it's hard to say what, what, what's going to take hold, but ultimately the thrust of what he was saying is, is that it's, you know, climate change when you have more carbon dioxide, excessive amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, you, you ultimately get sea level rise. So that's that, but there is also a potential for the Earth to suddenly freeze that's the subject of my of my channel there is a potential for the earth to suddenly freeze and that potential comes from changes in the atmosphere which is what's going on right now it's going on not only from from anthropogenic releases of natural gas which you can see for yourself right there it's really this is a total column but if you look at the 850 this is 1200 feet up you can see what's going on and who's all doing it this product was made to shame polluters that's why they made it that's why it's here this is satellite data and and other collected data this is what's happening this is what's really going on 500 hectopascal forget about it look at that 500 hectopascals is about 18,000 feet so it's it's kind of where the kind of near where the jet stream is. The jet stream is between there and about 250 hectopascals, which is a, you're getting close to about 30,000 feet, something like that. You got the jet stream up there, and um, so this is where you you know you see the, the air bubbles, how the weather's moving around and stuff. But that's that's a lot of methane. That's a lot of methane, yo. All right. So it's uh, 2,320 parts per billion which is um, 2.3 parts per million ozone you know look at the same thing 850 hectopascals I'm not really looking at the surface because surface may not necessarily be germane Yeah, you got some. You have some emitters right down here off of. Uh, well, that's really kind of fascinating, actually. Myanmar, between um, India, Myanmar, and so you're looking at 
500 hectopascals. Sorry, 850 hectopascals. Yeah. That's not as bad as I've ever seen it in my life. 300, this is about 30,000 feet. Got a little accumulation there. Um, 50 hectopascals, you've got an accumulation at 50 hectopascals. And that's, that's principally from things like methane, uh, which are called volatile organic compounds. If there were no volatile organic compounds in the atmosphere, there were, there were, I'm sorry, yeah. If there was no volatile organic compounds, methane being the principal, to the point where they say, where they uh, reference non-methane, uh, you know, volatile organic compounds, if there were none of those, there would be no ozone. Oz, you, you know, yeah. You could take a jar of pure air, you know, and save it forever, and you will never find, uh, unless something really unusual happens, you will never find any ozone in there. Spritz a little bit of volatile organic compound in there, take your pick, uh, and bada boom, ching, bang, you've got ozone, because ozone requires what's called a reaction body, which is what methane is. What VOCs are, is they're like a reaction body. It allows ozone to to form <laughs> at the same time things like water vapor anything that bumps into ozone will cause it to break apart it's interesting it's an interplay that's where you gotta that's where you gotta bring in a chemist to come in and talk about the, the probabilities and you know phonons and photons and things like that you know when they break off and form this and that and that's when you gotta bring in a somebody who's got a master's degree PhD in atmospheric science and chemistry that's when this stuff you know yeah so let's see here what am I looking for I am looking for formaldehyde 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 it basically comes from forest fires but it also comes from the uh, industrial resins and things like that cabinets making cabinets and various stuff like that we are at the surface. Okay. So, total column kind of does give you a picture because it does come from fires. It actually gives you a better picture of what's up with the most of the stuff. Going through the different levels kind of gives you a picture of what it's doing. Yeah. 850 hectopascals. It's... There it is. They burn fires in these different places, India, Africa, and South America, to grow things. Slash and burn. And I guess it makes it it's easier, and, it, and, and, and then you can grow things in it. Formaldehyde, I mean, turns into formic acid. I don't, you know, so that's, that's going to do whatever it does. You know. Um, but that's from forest fires. Um, and, you know, firestorms and things like that, I mean, that's, you know, that's the fear about nuclear wars, that you would cause fires, the firestorms would cause a nuclear winter. So you see what's up with that. And the climate reanalyzer, and you're talking, you know, I mean, there's a lot of blue on that map. Yeah, there's a lot of red, but there's a lot of blue, and there's a lot of white. White is nominal, and that is the baseline is 79 to 2,000. See, the weird little thing is for atmospheric temperatures, the baseline is 79 to 2,000, and for sea surface temperatures, it's 71 to 2,000. Kind of weird. Not sure what's up with that. Maybe some big brain out there can explain to me what that really means. And that's it, average temperature. So yeah, there you go. Wow, dude. Yeah, it gets way cold all the way down to Harbin, China, North Korea, forget about it. So yeah. So there it is, the upshot is What's in the what's in the wind? It's technically it's an unknown. Technically it's an unknown, but if, if I was going to lay money on it, I'd say that we're going to have a cold spell. 
This is, this is what's going to be ongoing for the next 10 years. We'll see. We'll see. A lot of that stuff has to, has, has to depends on what the angle of uh, incident is on where you live of the sunlight. So if it's a, the sun is at a low angle, it might be cooler. If the sun's at a higher angle, it might be hotter. This is one of the things. There's variability depending on what, what angle the sunlight is, is hitting you at. But, the, you know, the drop dead thing is right now you can see the lower temperatures, the anomaly is bending towards cold and has been for a while on the equator. And that's all I got. You know, this is like I'm a one trick pony kind of um, at this point. Pardon the foul language. I'll probably go back and, you know, clip some of it out never been spoken to quite this way we've never been warned like this before all of us so many ice ages coming oh this is oppenheimer the oppenheimer ranch project diamond he argues with the um i i believe rightly so to a certain extent but a, too, a little too much emphasis is placed in my opinion a little too much emphasis is placed on um sunspots the sun going into hibernation, you know, having a a maunder minimum type of thing happening. But, you know, all those things happening at once. Milankovic, maunder, maunder minimum level of low sunlight output and um, a volcano that was basically shaped like a shotgun shell up towards the sky blowing many cubic kilometers of earth and large quantities of water into the stratosphere mesosphere you know all those things happening at once you know you know we'll see what happens but just bear in mind that that um Climate, if you look at the geologic history, climate is, is, is erratic, can be very erratic. It looks like a buzzsaw going up and down. We're talking about climate now, where it'll go hot. Climate will go hot for a while, and it'll go cold for a while. And, just, and, 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 and the whole thing with that is that you have these guys that are like, you know, every time it turns cold, they're like, well, oh, there's global warming. Burr, 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 burr. No, man, it's, that's why you got to watch Dan Britt. So you get the low down, you get the entire low down. Just go right here. Look at this. This link. The link is in. A, it will be in the description. I'm, I'm going to put the same links here. Uh, you might have a little trouble navigating around um, Copernicus. I'll put a link. Hopefully, it'll take you right there. And that's it. That's all I got. My name is R. Crosby Lyles. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, I don't want to throw shade on anybody. Love you guys, man, and this is why the reason I'm doing this is so so you all have the best information to take care of yourselves. If you live above the 30th parallel, it's a good thing to have a ham radio. They, they sell them cheap. I don't sell any of that stuff. Uh, you know, I don't do any paid promotions on this channel. They're little handheld things. Good to have. Good to have in your car. It's a ham radio. It's got emergency channels on it. You can hear what's going on in the world, stuff like that. Um, you know, get yourself some survival stuff, extra food, extra water. But have a stash, a stockpile, so you do not have to go out in the snow. A winter stash of whatever the hell it is, that whatever the goddamn thing you got to have to stay alive. No shit. For reals. You know? And that's it. Do what you got to do, guys. You know? And, and I'm, you know, it's a no-brainer. I mean... Figure it out. Google it up. How to how to hook up your your power systems. You know, if you got to run a generator so you don't gas yourself because somebody died. This you know, one of the 50 people, one or more of the 50 people that died. 50 people died in that snowstorm. A couple of one, at least one of them died from from carbon monoxide. So that's a thing. Take care of yourselves, guys. Be good. And that's it. My name is R. Crosby Lyles. I love you. Peace. Be good. See you. Bye.